Times are tough, but you don't need to let your business struggle. That's why we created the free Business Success Summit, where you'll learn how to grow and scale your business even through hard times. Visit mnbusinesssuccesssummit.com to learn more. If going through this has, has sort of awakened you to a new perspective on what you love to do and what you really didn't love to do and could easily shook the blame on something else, you may not want to be doing that again. <laughs> you know. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson. I bring you successful entrepreneurs, add valuable wisdom to your journey and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share and Prosper. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. It is that time. Welcome to another episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. It is Monday, noon central, and uh, I'm excited for today's uh, episode. So as you hop on, make sure you let us know where you're from so we can uh, we can give you some recognition. We already got people hopping on. So let me know you're here, and um, we'll get our, our guests introduced in just a second. Remember, every Monday, noon central, I come to you live on the Master Networks page to, uh, you know, do the Connect, Share, Prosper episode. Today, uh, welcome, Tina. We got Tina, Tina from uh, New York. Boy, New York's been hit hard with the coronavirus, so we'll, we'll, we're glad you're here, Tina. Let me introduce my guest today. Uh, Henry Penix is a global entrepreneur, best-selling author, investor, and advisor with a passion for big revolutionary ideas. In as many years as an entrepreneur, he has built many successful companies across technology, education, entertainment, real estate, and more, earning him appearances on ABC's hit program, Shark Tank, QVC, and Good Morning America. Throughout his career, he has learned that the best ideas and the biggest opportunities are worth fighting for. And for sure, I agree with that. Henry serves as an advisor and mentor to aspiring entrepreneurs, creating the leverage needed to win in business. Henry, welcome to this episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm excited to hear. I'm sure everyone wants to know and ask about your appearance on Shark Tank, it says here. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, um, it was uh, a, a little while ago. It was a while back, and uh, the episode took about an hour and 40 minutes to grab two minutes. And uh, I'll just say there was a small portion that, was really what I recorded. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but it, it's a it's a great show. They do a great job. Um, Mr. Wonderful and I probably got along the best. Uh, we had several conversations that were just amazing. Uh, most of those conversations did not make it to air, but it was really really good. Mark Cuban was a great guy, and uh, they 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 run a really good show. I wound up not getting a deal. Uh, but had some really good traction uh, when we were, you know, when it was off and they've continued to air it. I, as recently as two months ago, uh, uh, I had a couple friends call that said they saw me. And uh, one guy even said he was going uh, before all the coronavirus stuff happened. He was traveling on an international flight and they had it on Delta Entertainment. He goes, Henry, I'm why he sent me a, a message from his uh, laptop. He said, Henry, I'm watching you on a Delta flight going to China or somewhere. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Far reaching. Yeah, that's cool. And and just like how long that, you know, if it was a couple of years ago, how lasting that, that kind of. Oh, uh, for sure. For sure. Super awesome. So Henry, you know, one of the things you and I were talking about just before we went live is that, you know, it's an interesting time with entrepreneurs and some are in some areas are getting back to work. Some have not been able to work based on, you know, maybe the service they provide or the products they have. Um, you know, what's your take on this and what should entrepreneurs be thinking about right now? What should they be looking at and pivoting for the future? Yeah, well, I mean, depending on what industry you're in, it's going to mean something different to you. So I'm going to make a couple of general overarching statements. Um, I think things have definitely changed. There, This is a new normal. We'll never go back to the way things were. But coming out of that, and I tend to see the glass half full, you always see efficiencies in the marketplace. You always see uh, people learning new technologies. You, you see a lot of great things coming out of something like this. And, you know, a, a, just a general statement, I would say between the wars that we've been in in America, what our founding fathers started with America, uh, how they started America, which was basically on faith. There was nothing here. They formed the Constitution. They you know, uh, gave us step by step how we should look at things and all that through all the difficulties, through all the trials, through everything we've been through, we are survivors and we have an instinct to survive. I do a whole teaching on that about our instinct to get back up 
Um, you know, you, you never uh, ride a bike just once and fall over and stay down. Yeah. You get up. You don't go to a, a conference to, to figure out the 10 top ways to ride a bike. When you start walking initially, uh, when you start to walk and stand up and fall down, you don't stay on the ground by evidence of everyone around, most everyone walking. Uh, you didn't go to a conference. You didn't read a book on the top 10 steps on how to walk. You, you've got that instinct in you and yeah. you're born to survive. You're born to get through it. You're born to be a winner and a conqueror and have the victory over your circumstances. So I see this as the same way. And again, different people are affected different ways. But if you're, if you're feeling this, the worst of all people in the world, know that it will get better. You will overcome. We will overcome as a nation and we will be better for it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of lessons, right? I mean, you can you can either go through it or grow through this right now. And so love that. I'm I'm curious for you, what are some of the ways you're growing through this right now? Like what's been something did you did you sort of like and let me give a little more context to this. So when when we first started this, I think one of the things, you know, when we started self-isolating, I did both personally and with the business is sort of self-audit and say, where am I prepared? Where am I vulnerable <laughs> that I wasn't prepared? so that you know i can i can fix that so what were some of the things for you that you've grown through and sort of self audited during this time yeah well it uh <laughs> this is going to sound so minimal and so trite but um i give american express a lot of business every month and i started seeing little things on my state because i could i had time to look i started seeing little things on my statements that i hadn't used in two or three years that i just you know, and I hate to even admit that as an entrepreneur, but I've got, you know, so many things going on. So that's a very small example, but it's also sort of a lesson in life, looking at those small things, mm. appreciating our families more, doing the self audits, uh, seeing if you've got a couple charges that shouldn't be there, or if you're loving your industry, you know, like if I'm here and I'm really wanting to fight for, I, for what I had going on before this thing happened, was I, did I have that mentality or did when this thing happened, did I say, oh, I can get out of this. I can get out of this. I really don't have to do this anymore. I, you know, and so if you kind of make a list and take those things that you tried to get out of and blame the virus on. And, and again, in some cases it's, you know, it's not possible to get past it. I get that. Uh, but, but if, if, if going through this has, has sort of awakened you to a new perspective on what you love to do and what you really didn't love to do, and could easily shook the blame on something else. You may not want to be doing that again. <laughs> you know, you may you may yeah. want to hang on to those things that you're passionate about. And you say, because I've got two or three big deals that have actually come through and closed during this time, like things that I've worked on for years. It's almost weird that when the economy was at its worst, um, I was doing very well. And and I don't I don't say that to you know like they say impress on you, but to impress upon you. Never give up because that next step could be your winning step, whether you're going through something like this or not. Yeah, I, I think that's, you, you know, it's accurate because every time, you know, you could be the the simple charges that you're talking about, you know, you, you had the time to look at. I think having the opportunity to look at those small things right now, that several of those small things could add up to a lot of big things. Absolutely, problems. absolutely. Um, you know, I know for me, we were talking about as soon as this, we started isolating, my kids were home with school and all that stuff. You know, one of the things we talked about was a simple thing, but we've talked about it for a year and a half since we moved into our, built our new house. But we have been talking about putting a garden in for a long time. Yep. And, you know, my, one of my twins, one of my youngest, he's 10. And he was like, every day that he was home, he's like, dad, are we going to go get the stuff for the garden? Are we going to go get the stuff for the garden? Well, we did, we planted it a couple of weeks ago and we, we just went out of town this week to spend some time. We came back and the first thing they did was run to the backyard. And, you know, now we've got, you know, we've got stuff this high, yeah, yeah. sort of literally the fruit of their labor. Yep. And I realized that's such a small thing for me, but it's such a massive thing for them. And I think in life and in business, especially as you said, as an entrepreneur, there's very small things sometimes for you, for me, that we do that make a big impact on others. And this is a time to not look past that. Yeah. And, and look, what you said was very important because first I want to thank you for putting in a garden because when the stock market got hit, I invested in Lowe's. So, <laughs> so, we By the way, that's where we went. So. Okay. <laughs> then, then you've actually paid for my time here. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Love it. 
Uh, but no, really, if, if you can look at that stuff and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to go down two tracks here. One is, yeah. yes, spend time with family, do those small things, look at things that you may have overlooked and really sort of strengthen that core. Strengthening your core, I think, is very, very important. And and all of us are the same. I mean, all of us have things that we haven't got to that we wish we would get done. That I mowed my yard for the first time in probably 25 years just because I wanted to get outside. I wanted to enjoy it. I, a couple of neighbors came by. I talked to them. I mean, like I would have, you know, nothing wrong with mowing your yard, but I just, at my time, my schedule, I'm always out of town and going here and there. But to take that time to do those simple things opened up opportunities, even in that, which was, which was so great. The second road I'll go down is this thinking about, you know, like I did the stock market back when it, when it crashed and everybody was going, Oh my gosh, I need to liquidate. I need to sell. I'm afraid what's going to happen with my money at my retirement. I took money and put it, into the market after I sat down a couple of nights with the time to think about how is this going to affect people? And I thought, well, people, and this is just one of maybe 10 or 12 stocks that I bought. People are going to be at home more. They're going to notice those little things in their house that need repaired. Yes. Finished. It's going to be a DIY project probably because they have the time. It's going to be a garden that somebody plants. It's going to be something or other. And what company is out there? I narrowed it to two companies. And then what one is more consumer driven versus like a builder contractor driven. And I bought Lowe's and, I, and I'm up, I think uh, 28, 30% in, in less than 30 days. Wow. So, so think about all those things. I mean, think about how you can prosper and benefit from this time. Don't, don't think about how it's going to kill you and, and put you down and, oh my God, I'm so afraid. Go out there and find opportunities because again, you have the instinct to survive. You have the instinct to thrive. You have the will to live. You've got, you know, we serve a great God, you know, we're, we're blessed as a nation. Yes. Take advantage of that and do something with it. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, in, in any market, really, there's always either a buyer or a seller market. And so if, if, if everyone's running from, it's something to look at because there, you know, people in generally in masses, they get reactionary and a herd mentality and they leave, you know, I think about a couple months ago, even we had somebody on podcast, we had, um, you know, Bobby Castro, I don't know if you knew Bobby Castro, but we had Bobby Castro on our podcast. He was talking about real estate and somebody asked a question and said, Hey, I feel like, I feel like I've not been in the real estate game and I'm feeling left out. And he was like, hold, hold on. Don't feel left out. Stack your cash right now. Stack and rack, maybe. <laughs> you know it. So when, and then he said, look, then when the market softens, that's when you'll be able to jump in yep. and look, here we are in some areas, the markets are starting to soften up. So there's always a way in either market and either way the economy is working to, to take advantage of opportunities is really what you're saying. Yeah. Now, Bobby's a good friend of mine and we've, we've talked a lot. We've communicated about a lot of things. And, you know, I, I just did a, a little thing the other day, which I haven't published yet, but it was about his, his saying stack and rack, you know, like you, a lot of people want to come down on you and say, dude, why are you holding cash? Like, that's the stupidest thing. You need to be invested. You're only making 1%. Well, if you only look at it as holding cash, then maybe they're right. But if you're looking at it as a time to have patience and wait for an opportunity, if you hold, pick a number, 50 grand, let's say for two years and you're making 1% on it, but you get a dip in the market or you get an opportunity that comes to you that you can purchase, and all of a sudden you make three or 400%. Now you're the smartest guy in the world that held cash, <laughs> you know, like, so, right. so again, you can't listen to conventional wisdom in unconventional times. So, you know, I, I think that and, and a couple of other things that he says is very relevant and pertinent, but look for the opportunity and, 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 you know, just shore up. Like, like sometimes I'll do this. I'll say, if I could rewind the clock for 30 days or 60 days, what would I have done differently? And then where I, am I today? What position am I in today to make sure that those things either not happen to me or that I'm prepared for the next 30, 60 days? Because you don't know, man. I mean, who would have ever thought something like this could have affected the entire world like it did? You know, no one. And then there's a certain element that you can never prepare for that. I mean, you, right. you might say, well, what can I do to make sure this happens next time? Well, in another 500 years when this happens, you know, you could do this, this and this. But it's really like reassessing where you are now and taking advantage of opportunities that present themselves now, today, living in the present. 
Oh, but there's a lot there. So let me yeah. just start. <laughs> let, me, let me start with this. So sorry, uh, I run on sometimes. <laughs> no, 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 it's good. It's good. I, you know, the impact of this. I think I think some people are looking at this. Go, okay, we're we're back to work, and and I've said a few times on these these podcasts that I think sometimes it's a feeling a little bit like getting pulled over for speeding. Like you're speeding, you get pulled over, you see the lights, you're like, oh shoot, you know, speeding. Maybe you get let off with a warning. Maybe this coronavirus wasn't that bad for you. Maybe you're like, oh, just got a warning, a little blip. Okay, I'm gonna slow down. My heart's beating a little fast. Got pulled over, right. or maybe maybe it hit you a little hard. You got your ticket. Maybe. Maybe this is a multiple offense and you got your license revoked. I don't know how hard this was for right. you, but but for you listening today, but don't be like the person who got pulled over and an hour later you're back speeding again. Exactly. I think the impact to this is going to be far reaching. It's going to be long. Healthcare is going to look differently. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be different. And so, uh, to, you know, to your point, guys, I really think that listening to conventional wisdom, there's never been a time that I can think of maybe once or twice in all of history where the entire thing has been shook up, like as drastic as it has, right. As dust settles, you got to be looking for the opportunities right now because they're going to be there. Yep. So my question for you, Henry, is this, and guys, if you have a question for Henry, make sure you put it in the comments. I see a lot of you here. We'll make sure we get your question uh, to Henry here. What's something that you are working on right now. You know, we've had several people on on the episodes the last few weeks who've shared some really cool insights to different things that, you know, here's here's where my business is and where it's been traditionally, but now I'm kind of making this shift or no, I'm holding tight to what I'm doing. Where are you kind of at and what are you working on for the future? Yeah, I, I think most of the things that I'm working on, uh, the only really way they've been affected is that maybe I'll look at a deal differently or maybe retrade a deal a little bit, you know, since circumstances have changed, maybe you can get the opportunity not to gouge anyone or take advantage at all. But if there is that opportunity for a win-win, you can kind of shift in that direction. I'm, and, and I'm in technology, uh, I'm in real estate, uh, I'm in um, uh, management. Like there's a lot of things that I do and there, and there's a lot of people that I communicate with every day. So, the, the core essence of what I do really hasn't changed. It's just kind of looking at every other deal a little bit differently and see if there is a better win-win now yeah. that this thing has changed everybody and everything and every bank and every financial institution and, you know, all that. Uh, but again, and I, I'm going to sound like a broken record. If you know you're going to survive, which you are, if you don't know it, let me tell you now, you are going to survive. This too shall pass. Uh, look for live in the present day and look for things you can do right now, today, this moment. Who knows if we're going to have something 10 times worse than this next year? I don't know. Maybe another 500 years. Like I said earlier, what I do know is today, I do know what I can do today, putting one foot in front of the other, preparing the best I can for my future, surrounding myself with great people, listening to podcasts, getting positivity poured into my life. And then let that be the spark that ignites a fire in me that I may want to create a new business. I may want to do a new deal. I may want to do this or that, but, but specifically to answer your question, my deals, my life, uh, you know, other than traveling less has, has really not changed. You mentioned about uh, management. That was a word you said, real estate technology management. I'm curious from the management piece or maybe management within your other businesses and, and things you're doing, it has, has this environment changed any way you're interacting or dealing with the people or are you seeing this in other businesses? Like um, I, I've seen, you know, some people have talked about uh, the way they're interacting with their staff, their teams, their, their companies. Have you seen any shift in that? Yeah, a lot. Uh, so um I'll have to kind of break this up in parts of who I deal with because you've got people who are, are kind of working hourly and you've got people who you trust and you know, you're paying them two or $300,000 a year. Like, so there's a, there's a huge bridge there, but, uh, but like the people that, that are, are working hourly for an hourly type wage, uh, some of those people um, are contemplating with the, with the uh, unemployment, that they're getting and they're getting extra, uh, you know, every week where it almost benefits them more not to work. You know, uh, they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place and they're saying, okay, 
even if my, even if this X, Y, Z company wants me to come back, I'm really not making as much when I go back to them as I do on my unemployment with this kicker, which I'm all for people, you know, right. getting what they can and, and bettering their lives. I'm all for that, but not at the expense of a long-term relationship. So if somebody can get this for six or eight weeks, but they're going to ruin a relationship that may affect them the next six or eight years. So true. You have, you have to rethink that. And, and a manager, an efficient manager has to rethink the way they communicate that to their people. Like you, you're going to have to stay more in contact. You're going to have to remind them of the long-term effects on this and, and not in a threatening way. I mean, I don't rule by fear ever. Right. Um, I rule by, you know, and, and I meant rule. That's so goofy. Uh, I manage by inspiration. And, and if you can inspire someone with the facts, no, no hyperbole, but if you can inspire someone with the facts and let them see the whole picture and how their actions that may in fact benefit them for a few days may hurt them in the long run and then let them decide. And then when they come back, uh, give them a little bonus or something. Say, you know, you made the right decision. I, I want to give you a, a, a you know, COVID-19 bonus just for coming back and being part of our team. And I want you to know, I really appreciate you. Oh, like that's, that, that's a, that's a big deal. And there are millions across the U S in that exact situation. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of the, the local business owners are making those decisions right now with their people and their people are having to make those decisions. You know, I see these reports and I, and I think they're great. Don't get me wrong. I, I see the, you know, hey, this this actor or this athlete's paying for this person. Those are great. Like, and, and I don't want to minimize it in any way. But there's also the business owner who's grossing a hundred thousand dollars a year and paying somebody thirty, and they're still paying for their staff even though there's no income coming in. Is just as potentially brave or or remarkable that they're Absolutely. doing that. You know, than somebody who's making thirty million dollars a year. It's all the same, and so. I know those things are happening. Some of our listeners, some of the people watching have done everything they can to keep their people employed. And it's a big deal. Um, okay, question for you on this. Uh, guys, if, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them in the, the comments. We'll get there. We're getting a lot of uh, comments. Uh, Tina had gone back and said, I'm finishing an ebook on entrepreneurial survival. Um, Barb says pivot is like the keyword multiple streams of in income right now. Yeah, pivoting right now has become like a keyword on every every podcast we've had on. Right. Uh, I, have, I have a question for you. The, the fo the picture behind you of the lion. Is there <laughs> that a, is from you or from a listener? <laughs> no, this is from me. Is there, okay. so here's what's interesting. Every podcast I have, uh, I would say at least 60, 70%. They usually have something behind them, a photo or something uh, that has a meaning. And so I'm curious uh, for you, it's a beautiful photo. What's the meaning? Yeah, thank you. Well, I uh, I picked this up in an art gallery and just I, I fell in love with it because I I, I try to lead uh, like that lion, like like um, I, I think a person can be kind of cool, calm and collective and be sitting there with a peaceful look on their face. But when it's time to go hunt the prey or time to get a job done, you get up and you take care of business. You know, there, there's another picture of a lion that I have uh, on my phone and, and a buddy actually sent this to me. And it was a lion like kind of like it is behind me, except he had a face full of blood mm. and it was like blood all over him. And it said, everybody, you know, wants to be king until you know what it takes to be king. Yes. And, and the guy was like bloodied up and he could have been attacked. He could have been guarding his pride. He could have, you know, had to go out and hunt for something. So I, I, there's a lot of meanings there for me. Uh, I, I just love the picture for one, but I, but I think if we can stand up and see ourselves as strong as that and strong in leadership, uh, you know, I, I think that's beneficial. I, I like that a lot. Um, I'm going to have to look for one of those like that. Cause I, and now it makes a lot of sense too. I can see where you're, you're coming from, from the like, you talked about the survival instinct and all of those kinds of things. I can see where your attachment is uh, to that. Corey said, love that lead like a lion and take care of business when needed. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Victoria says, Henry, what inspires you aside from the lion? What inspires you? <laughs> uh, doing podcasts like this. Uh, I, I love to be around like-minded people. Uh, I love to have good questions. I love to share things. You know, I always tell people if I could, talk to the 23 year old Henry, 
uh, what would I have told him? And yeah. when, when I can make a difference in someone's life like that, honest to God, this is not a pat answer because I don't have to do this. Um, right. When I can make a difference in someone's life like this, that means the world to me. Uh, and that inspires me and getting feedback and, and comments like, you know, hey, you're on the right track. Or you, I had somebody who, who got, purchased one of my books like years ago. And I just heard from them not too long ago. And they said, you know, that one thing you wrote and blah, 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 just changed my life forever. And that's, you know, that does more, more for me personally than if you would give me a million dollars cash. Yeah, no, I get it a lot, actually. So what would you tell the 23 year old self right now? Because we have some 23, 24, 25 year old entrepreneurs that are part of our organization. They listen to this podcast every week. They're very involved. Um, you know, they, this is where you can make that impact. There are several of them watching right now. Yeah, I, I would just say uh, the, the younger generations, the, the people that are in their 20s making a name for themselves right now, you, you guys have been talked about a lot about not having a good work ethic and about an entitlement attitude, or if you just don't like something, you're not going to get involved in it. And, and I'm not saying everybody, but, but I've just heard a few comments like that. And it really makes me mad. I've, I've not met too many people like that in their twenties. And I do consulting for, for younger guys as well and girls. Um, but I would say you're not entitled to anything. Mm. And before I started to make it and make a lot of money, uh, I was the guy cleaning out the toilet. I was the guy sweeping the floor. I was the guy who would double back and make sure everybody was, was in the right order and not just running ahead of everybody. And, you know, just, just being this hedonistic all out doing whatever I can, whenever I can to whoever I can. Uh, so I think taking a long-term approach, I think making your mind up that nothing's ever going to be given to you and you may have to do some things that you don't like, to get to choose some things that you do like later on in life. And mm -hmm. that boils down to work ethic and passion. So if you've got a passion for something and you really want to get there, you know, mentor, get some mentors, read some books, read, uh, watch some YouTube videos on people that have got there uh, and have been successful in more areas of life than just financial. So you That's see awesome. some guys that, that may have financial gain and all that, but they've stepped on everybody's head. And then when it's their turn to kind of go down in the valley from the mountaintop, because if you live long enough, you will experience a mountaintop and you'll experience a lot of valleys. And you'll also figure out that the, that the mountaintop you have to walk down from a few times in your life, you're going to meet some of those people going up. So how did you treat those people? How did you treat the janitor? How did you treat, uh, you know, another good friend of mine's Tim story. And he, oh, yeah. he, me, he said, Henry, he said, I always, I've known Tim for like 25 years. He goes, Henry, I always watch how people treat a waiter or a waitress when we're out eating together. Uh, Tim's last birthday was a, a few months ago and we were both in Oklahoma City and, and we wound up having dinner together. It was just he and I, nobody else. And it was a, like a quiet little quaint place. And, and, you know, he was probably watching me. I was probably watching him. Had a great waiter. Uh, tipped him great. And then we had a conversation about, you know, watching how other people interact with people that are, are serving you or cleaning up after you or whatever, as opposed to somebody who's a president of a bank. So, you know, that, that would be the, that you're trying to get a loan from, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah. But that would be the other thing is treat everybody the right way, treat them equally, get a passion that will drive you and be ready to do some things that you may not want to do so that you'll be in a position to have a choice to do the things that you, you you love to do. Man, really, really powerful advice. So probably of the entire episode, that's to me the like part I wanna clip out of this because it, it's it's timely and it's timeless. Like it's, it's really important right now because some people are having to do things they haven't had to do in a long time. They've had to come down from the mountain. Sure. And then there's people who are the opportunities to go up and yeah, you can't look past that. You can't uh, miss that opportunity to help lift or or push or pull or whatever it might be to help yeah, whatever side you're on <laughs> yeah i i had a uh i had a young lady who we had we had ordered some I mean, you just made me think of this we'd ordered some food and of course you yeah, i got a pull up and you call and they run it out to your car and all this stuff and i could just tell i, I don't know why in that moment i had that 
feeling, I could just tell she was really stressed out. Like just, and there weren't a lot of cars, but I think maybe just all the pressures of everything going on sure. right now. Sure. And, uh, and uh, she came out to the car and, you know, I wrote a pretty, pretty nice tip and, mm -hmm. and I watched her get to the door and she looked back and I was like, I'm pulling out before she has a chance to, to come back to the car. But, right. you know, I realized in that moment that, um, yeah, it could be easy to minimize people or, or look past things or, or, you know, well, they made the decisions that those, those things never do anybody any good. So I think the way that you, you treat people is just so important. And you're getting a lot of likes on that, that comment, by the way, my friend. Yeah. Well, and, and, and listen to this too, if you don't have money to tip, because you may be watching now, especially if you're in your twenties and you don't have food for next week, you know, but, but the, the people that you interact with, What's even better than money and money's great. Money represents everything you work for. So it, it's significant to people. Yes. You don't have money to tip with. And there was a, there was a time in life when I didn't have money to tip with. I grew up very poor. Uh, I was in a fraternity in college and I used to wash the pledges cars for 20 bucks to get gas, to drive home. I mean, I, I mean, I've been down at the lowest and I've been up at the highest, uh, a member of the United Nations as an ambassador. I mean, I, I've, I've been like the full spectrum. I, I'm not, again, I never say that to brag, but it's just weird when I think about it. Um, and some of the greatest tips that I ever got was somebody saying an encouraging word to me. So if, if I was in that situation, pulled up to a restaurant, somebody's stressed and you don't have the money to tip them, you know, just a kind word, take, sure. take, take 30 seconds and say, you know, I know you must be afraid to, walk out the cars like this. You never know, you know, you never know who you're going to come in contact with. But I want to tell you that I so appreciate you bringing out my food and you're, you mean the world to me for dedicating your life to make my life easier. Thank you so much. And God bless, you know, that sort of thing will stay with them longer, even longer than the money. <laughs> They're going to like the money probably more initially, but something like that, if you can do both, do both, but, but something like that will stay with them forever and could change somebody's life. Brad says, reminds me of the story where the med school professor had a question on the final medical exam. It said, what's the name of the janitor that you see here daily? Absolutely, uh, dude. Absolutely. That, that's what I'm talking about. So a couple of years ago, uh, we started, <clears throat> we didn't realize it was going to become tradition, but every event we've done, we, we asked the hotel manager to bring the whole staff from from the chef to whatever. And they're always like, why are we doing this? Why do we always bring them into our leadership session? And we, we asked them to introduce themselves. Well, the first time we did it, we started to find out that we had people from all over the world. You know, we, I remember we had somebody from Ecuador and we had all, like, we went around and was like, wow. And they thought they were in trouble. They thought like the first time I remember the, some of these <laughs> people, like, they, they're looking at their manager, like mm -hmm. getting called out in front of everyone. And, and then, you know, our whole team, just the first time without my saying anything, they, they stood and gave them a, standing ovation for their help. And, and I remember the first time we did that, the manager, and again, it was total sort of just organic. It happened. And uh, the manager came up and said, you know, I've been doing this 15 years. I've never had a group uh, do anything like that. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. No, nobody ever says thank you to the staff. See, the, the good part of that, about that is that you did it. And I applaud you more than you'll ever know. The, the horrible thing about that is that people are conditioned that when you call them out, it's usually to get in trouble mm. and that sucks. <laughs> you know, yeah. how they felt going in there means that we as business leaders need to do what you did more often and bring people out in the open and tell them when they're doing a good job. Yeah. And I've always just been impressed that our team is always like, Hey, when are we doing this? When are we like, they're, they, they can't wait. Uh, and, you know, everyone's coming up and Hey, are we, let me know. I don't want to make sure I'm not in the bathroom when we do this. Like, when are we Yeah. Doing, you know? Yeah. That's so uh, awesome. Yeah. Cause it's better to give than receive. I mean, when you yeah. give somebody a compliment like that and I've, I've talked to some people in restaurants again, if I can give them a tip, I will, if I can give them extra, I do, but I'll always try to leave them with an encouraging word. And dude, I've had, I've had waiters and waitresses come to tears just because I've said a kind word. I mean, you could literally change somebody else's world if you spend 30 seconds with them and just give them a kind word. So true. Uh, man, thank you. I think you've blessed us and our audience today with such a great message. I had no idea this is where we'd end up today. No, <laughs> There's so many places we could have went and, yeah. and this is probably the most important though. So thank you for pulling that out of me. 
Uh, well, I think it's where we needed to end up. That's what I think. I think that's where we needed to be today. Um, uh, it's so good. I'm seeing some great comments, some great feedback. Henry, I appreciate you. How can our how can our audience find you, follow you, uh, find your books? Where can they get they get their hands on that stuff? Uh, just all the social media is Henry Penix. Uh, HenryPenix.com is my website. It's just very simple. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, all that. Just type in Henry Penix. That's such a unique name. You don't get too many to to pop up and uh, it, it'd be great to hear from you. Yeah. Henry, I really appreciate you being on this episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. Uh, I feel like you've blessed the lives of, of those listening today. You are making impact. You are doing some good things in this world. And I appreciate you joining us today on this episode. Thank you so much. Guys, remember every Monday, noon central on the Master Networks Facebook page, I will bring you successful entrepreneurs like Henry who, listen, they're going to share the ups, the downs, the struggles, the good, the bad, the ugly, and really impart their wisdom. And if you realize today in Henry's episode here that, you know, it's never about what they get. It's always about what they can give. And Henry was an example of that today. So again, remember, join us, share this episode with your friends, uh, tag somebody that needed to hear this message today. And we will see you guys next week on the next episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. Times are tough, but you don't need to let your business struggle. That's why we created the free Business Success Summit, where you'll learn how to grow and scale your business, even through hard times. Visit mnbusinesssuccesssummit.com to learn more.